Welcome to another round of the BRCC Mazda Supercup Championship. This weekend, we're in the Northern Hills of Darlington at Croft Circuit. Now, Croft, as we all know, has just recently been reserviced, which has caused the guys in the Super Cups to cut seconds off their lap times compared to last year. Now, after qualifying, first blood does go to Jack Harding on pole position, but the championship leader, separated by eight points, is Luke Herbert down in second. But there is only 12 points separating the top three with Aidan Hill, but Aidan is currently down in fifth position. So it's going to be an interesting one to watch. I'm going to hand it straight over to Andy to see what happens. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, here's how the grid lines up in full then. Harding and Herbert, row one, with Steve Roberts and Patrick Fletcher, his best qualifying result of the season, in fourth. Aidan Hill's down in fifth, as you said, with Jack Sycamore, then Will Stevenson and Gary Townsend on row four. Whilst Nick Rutter and Ray Worley making a welcome return round out the top ten. Then it's David Henderson, Bradley Kent, George Grant and Chris Richardson at the back of the field. So getting ready then for a start with Jack Harding, the local man on pole position, Aiden Hills with some points deficit to try and close, starts down on the third row but makes a really good start and gets up the inside of Steve Roberts and Patrick Fletcher immediately, two wheels on the grass for Aiden Hills as he tries to challenge for third place into the first corner, it's dead level meanwhile between Harding and Herbert in front of us but it was Harding that gets into the first quarter first, Herbert second then, Hills third, Fletcher fourth yes just gets the better of Steve Roberts fifth and Jack Sycamore will be in sixth position so a bit of shuffling already of the order but crucially for Aidan Hills then who is 12 points behind this man Luke Herbert in the championship he is into third and right on the tail of his big points rival already Luke Herbert though not content with second is already challenging for the race lead goes to the outside down to tower corner but then Aidan Hills is there already looking to the inside can't get through but that's the problem for uh, Herbert if he goes for the lead he could lose second place because Aidan Hills will be right there snapping at his heels all race long to try and find a way through it's sometimes not the easiest of circuits to overtake at Croft so they know that in the early stages that's your best chance to try and find a way through and that's what Herbert's trying to do look all over Jack Harding goes to the outside into Sonny really going to go right around the outside there but he tries to cut back to the late apex almost gets to the inside of the second part of the sunny complex but that little bit of battling they did there just through two corners has allowed hills to close back in Aiden had dropped back slightly through the previous couple of corners and he's right back with them again now as they go into the complex and at the end of the opening lap so Harding leading the way then Herbert second in theory if things finish as they are now Harding would score two more points than Luke Herbert with the two points for fastest lap on offer could well change as the race goes on. There's Will Stevenson and Jack Sycamore as well doing battle a bit further back. Those two have been fairly evenly matched all season long. We anticipate they're going to be together a lot this weekend as well. In this, the first race of the weekend here at Croft. So the leaders then down to turn one again. Luke Herbert weaving around in the toe, trying to find a way past Jack Harding, goes to the outside line, but that's a risky one to try. Looks to try and cut back to the inside, but no, still. No way through, Harding defending well at the moment, and now this train of cars is getting longer because as well as Aidan Hills, he also has Steve Roberts and Jack uh, Patrick Fletcher behind him. Herbert's the outside of uh, Harding here into Sunny, and that leaves the door open for Aidan Hills, and Hills is through. Aidan Hills into second position, he did no second invitation, and Steve Roberts might buy into all of this as well. He gets alongside Luke Herbert coming through the uh, second part of Sunny. And Luke Herbert now will he's on the inside line for the next quarter, but Steve Roberts won't back out of this one without a fight. In the end, though, I think, yes, that uh, Luke Herbert will fend him off. And then there's a lockup from Roberts. He runs out wide. And Patrick Fletcher, looking for his first podium of the year, well, he's now one position away from it. He's into fourth. Roberts locks up again. Needs to be careful not to flat spot those tyres. Patrick Fletcher, who has a best finish so far this year of sixth position, is that right? Yeah, two sixth positions he's had early on in the year. Not yet had a top... Uh, five He's into fourth position now so this would be his best finish of the year to the final lap then on board with Luke Herbert in third place Aidan Hills in front of us and we're looking to the inside into Clervo corner but Hills will get into the corner first with Fletcher and Roberts still right behind but this is maybe going to allow Jack Harding now to pull away slightly out in front Luke Herbert has set the fastest lap in this race, by the way, a lap or two ago. So Herbert, if he hangs on to third position, will at least score 98 points. So that's the same amount of points as if he finished second. So Harding will only take two of those eight points away from him in the championship. So it will be a six-point margin between Herbert and Harding going into the second race of the weekend, whilst Nathan Hills will actually not take any points out of Herbert because he's only one position in front of him. Through the S's. 
back to Barcroft and oh, Herbert trying to get alongside here. This is the place where Hills got past him earlier on, but Aiden, we know, is brave on the brakes and gets the car stopped as well. So he will hold on to the position, gets sideways again though through Sunny. And then back towards the S's once again. Herbert oh, weaving around this way and that. Can't get through. Herbert goes to the outside though. He's got the inside line for the next corner maybe. And Aiden Hills trying to close the door, which he does. And Herbert can't afford any contact, can't afford a disqualification because that will no doubt end his championship hopes immediately. Through the final corner then, Jack Harding on his way to career win at number 18 and crucially his fourth of the season. He has won more races now than anybody else this year. And at his home track, he wins race one. Second place goes to Aidan Hills. Third is Luke Herbert with Patrick Fletcher and Steve Roberts rounding out the top five. Brilliant racing there between all of them. Uh, that result shakes up the championship slightly. There's confirmation of it. Will Stevenson was just outside the top five in sixth. Then Jack Sycamore, Gary Townsend, David Henderson and Nick Rutter to round out the top ten. Ahead of Bradley Kent, George Grant, Ray Worley and Chris Richardson in 14th. Jack, that was incredible to watch for all of us at home. But how was it for yourself? Yeah, it was really nice to qualify in pole. Um, but a lot's happened between qualifying and now. Um, won't really get into it too much, but it's been a bit of a difficult day. Um, so to come home and win is all I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, they didn't make it easy. The slipstream's really big round here, so you can't get away. As soon as you pull a gap, they just fit right back on you. So uh, yeah, managed to hold off. Um, hold off Luke for so long, and then Aiden got through, and then held off Aiden. So yeah, no, great, I can't spend anything more. Aiden, you managed to get ahead of Luke, and I think you would have had Jack if you had a few more laps in you there. Uh, yeah, it was a good race. Obviously, starting from fifth wasn't ideal, but we got a good start going to third straight away. Um, and then, yeah, it was hard to attack Luke straight away because I had St Steve and Pat, Pat behind me. So I just, yeah, just waiting, waiting to get a little gap to Steve. And then, yeah, when Luke, Luke went wide around Sunny, I managed to nip up the inside. And then I had a couple of opportunities at Jack, but I didn't want to lose second to Luke. So I, I was not, I wouldn't say happy with sitting in second, but I wasn't too keen on having to overtake him and, and drop him back so yeah it was a good race race two is about to get underway here for the mazda super cup and the drivers are about to get ready in the car so very quickly i just want to catch your aiden hills who i was chatting to this morning now aiden i was chatting to you this morning you were saying that you're quite laid back coming into these races how do you do that um yeah i just like to stay chilled you know we're, we're all here to have fun so we're racing, it's better than being at work at the end of the day, so there's no point getting too uptight about it. Obviously, I get nervous when I'm in the car and stuff, but yeah, I'm just here to have fun and anything else, you know, being on the podium's a bonus and winning a race is even better. <laughs> Well then, cars gridding up ahead of our second race of the weekend. The grid based on the result from the first one, so it's Harding and Hills from Herbert and Fletcher with Steve Roberts and Will Stevenson. The front few rows, then Jack Sycamore and Gary Townsend, David Henderson and Nick Rutter make up the fifth row of the grid ahead of Bradley Kent, George Grant, Ray Worley and Chris Richardson right at the back. So the championship situation then, Jack Harding gets the gap down slightly, just six points now between Herbert and Harding in Herbert's favour, with Aiden Hill still a further six back in third position, but he starts a lot closer to them this time towards the front of the grid. Away we go then, off and racing once more, and down towards the first corner they will go with Luke Herbert leading the way down to the first corner. He's got his nose in front. Can Jack Harding fight back? He really needs to try and fight back into the first turn, which he does, and gets there first. But Aiden Hills, look behind, is on the outside line and in danger of getting shuffled out here. Roberts is into third, and Patrick Fletcher was attacking for fourth place as well as they went into Hawthorne. So a good start in race one for Hills, not this time around. And Aiden Hills finds himself unfortunately a bit further away from his big championship rivals than he would like. Back with Luke Herbert then as he attacks for the race lead into tower corner for the first time of asking. Round the outside he goes behind Aiden Hills. He's down to fourth place but already trying to do something about that. Attacking Steve Roberts for third as they turn through the right hander. Oh Harding and Herbert touch and Herbert's on the grass and this could cost him all sorts of momentum. Steve Roberts gets alongside him. He will go into second position and where's Aiden Hills? Surely he's not far away. No there he is. Forces his way up the inside. Luke Herbert off the road and he could find himself off the podium positions as well. Aiden Hills has gone through. Luke Herbert though fights straight back up the inside into Sunny, the corner at which Aiden Hills mugged him in the previous race and Luke Herbert says I've learnt from you I know how it's done and he shows him how it's done back up the inside and back into third place for Luke Herbert fabulous stuff down the straight they go then Aiden Hills briefly was onto the podium he's back down to fourth position again now but at least the uh, championship leader is a little bit closer to him 
And actually, as things stand now, this is working out particularly well for Jack Harding, who is down to take four points at the moment out of Luke Herbert. But there's a long way to go. And we know that Luke is good at getting these fastest lap points, which are pivotal, really, when the championship situation is this close. So back across the line, then. End of lap one. And Jack Harding leading the way. But Steve Roberts trying his best to go with him. Steve is still looking for his first victory of the year, remember? having come close a couple of times this year, but it's been a trying season at times as well for Steve, who would love to get himself a trio of podiums here, maybe. Well, maybe not podiums, he was fifth in race one, but maybe a couple of podiums, maybe even a race win in amongst them would go down nicely. He's in second place at the moment, so things are going well. Aiden Hill's not so well for him though, fourth place, as we ride on board with the Hills Motorsport privately run car braking zone at tower car squirm around there in what is still quite a bumpy braking zone they may have resurfaced this place but it's not lost any of its character it's still quite bumpy it's still got uh, a few off camber corners all of which add to the unique challenge of what is a tight and technical circuit but then it opens out into this very high speed second half through the s's and barcroft and into sunny where luke herbert tries to get up the inside of Steve Roberts, but Steve Roberts was telling me before the race that that's the part of the circuit at which he is the most confident through Sunny in and out. And he showed that confidence there late on the brakes, carried good mid corner speed and fended off Luke Herbert, who will not want to take too many risks here. Third place is better than nothing, but he will be very conscious of the fact that Harding is only six points behind him now and is two places ahead of him in the race. Into the hairpin. Attempting to go up the inside there, and Herbert shows his nose, just trying to distract Steve Roberts, really, more than actually pounce on that occasion. But look, Aidan Hills is right back with them, and uh, Patrick Fletcher not far behind in fifth place either. So this race is building nicely as we head into the middle portion. Join us after the break to see what happens next. back everyone to Croft where Aiden Hills is attacking for second place here in the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup and he forces Steve Roberts onto the grass coming out of the hair bin and he's through but he brings Luke Herbert with him that wasn't really ideal that for Aiden Hills because Luke is now chasing him down as well he could have done with getting a car between himself and the championship leader but he is at least into second place now Luke Herbert in third position Roberts fourth Patrick Fletcher is still there in fifth position getting now into the closing stages of this one and it's been another really close race that is now starting to come alive properly in the closing stages. Aiden Hills then defending into tower from Luke Herbert who gets himself alongside on the exit does he? He's quicker on the tighter line and they're going to rub if they're not too careful. Herbert with two wheels on the grass. Oh there is a bit of contact going into the Jim Clark Essendon. Herbert is alongside now round the outside. More contact at one of the fastest parts of the circuit and Luke Herbert is not backing out of these fights when he really doesn't want to be getting too physical. Leans on Aiden Hills again going through Barcroft. Hills will uh, now have to try and turn his attention to keep Steve Roberts behind which he does I think but uh, that was... Uh, Luke Herbert forcing his way through. Meanwhile, Jack Sycamore and Will Stevenson are scrapping hard behind. And Sycamore still in front, but the race leaders are going on to the final lap of what has been another really, really interesting race this in the Master MX-5 Super Cup. And still five cars locked in combat at the head of the field. Harding, Herbert, Hills, Roberts, Fletcher. And it's nice to see the Fletcher name getting involved more and more regularly now with the leaders. At the start of the season, it was only really the reverse grid race threes where we used to see Patrick briefly at the front of the field, but Anglesey in particular, he was a regular top five or six runner. And this weekend as well, he is looking really, really racy indeed. So too Luke Herbert, who's waving at Aiden Hills behind him, saying, work with me and we might both be able to get past Jack Harding, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Herbert went to the outside, Harding for, uh, defended the inside line and Hills thought about going up the inside of Herbert for second. In the end, the positions stay as they were, down towards the Jim Clark S's. Now, and Aiden Hill's going to be able to maybe make another one of these Banzai moves up the inside, like he did late on in the previous race. Well, the situation might be arising in front of him where he could do that, because Herbert again was looking to the outside line of Jack Harding. So Aiden Hill's goes right around the outside of everybody, gets sideways. Aiden Hill's going for the race lead, but he's off the road, he's onto the grass, and Aiden Hill's throws away a podium result. Oh, what a shame that was for Aiden. What we're hearing, he's been given a track limits penalty anyway. So I suppose he didn't really have a huge amount to lose there. He was going to drop to fifth place anyway. The only difference is he's done it now without the assistance of a penalty. Full credit for trying, though. Harding then leading the way. 
Herbert second place as they go into the final quarter for the final time. Can Luke Herbert do it? I don't think he can. Jack Harding's not going to make a mistake now, surely. And for the second time this weekend, the AK Automotive car is going to win and become the first double winner this year. Two wins from two at Croft for Jack Harding. He wins the second race here in the Northeast. Second place goes the way of Luke Herbert. Third for Steve Roberts and fourth for Patrick Fletcher, despite a five-second penalty going his way as well. Aidan Hills and Will Stevenson both received five-second uh, track limit penalties too with Gary Townsend, David Henderson, Nick Rutter and Bradley Kent rounding out the top ten. Then Ray Worley, George Grant and Chris Richardson with Jack Sycamore sadly retiring on the very last corner. Luke, that was absolutely incredible to watch, but can you give it from your point of view? First, second, third, fourth, third, <laughs> second, first, third, second, yeah. Just, it was just... Um, just a, you know, just a, 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 a typical Mazda Super Cup race. Um, I got Jack off the line, but not quite enough. Then I was second, then I was third, then I was trying to attack, trying to defend, trying to attack. Um, but then eventually I managed to get back to second, uh, break Aiden and Steve, um, get the fastest lap. So I know Jack got 100 points for a first, but I got 100 points for second and fastest lap. So um, all my seconds, I always seem to get fastest lap. So it feels like a win to me. Uh, it, obviously, it's not an outright win, which would be nicer because I've only had two this year. Uh, but we're still leading the championship by eight or ten points on drops, so you know I couldn't ask for for more. And with the reverse grid, I get a chance to be ahead of Jack for once. So yeah. Third and final race is about to get underway here for the BRCC Mazda Super Cups. And with it being a reverse grid, we've got Jack Harding, who has been leading this weekend so far in his local circuit, down in eighth position. Luke starting in front of him, and then we have Aidan Hills in fourth position. Now Aidan has told me he's going to have to get some serious leg work behind him to get away before Luke and Jack catch him. So can he do it? I'm interested to see. So we're going to hand it straight over to Andy to run you through all of the action. Lindsay, well, I think he's absolutely right. These reverse grid races are often decided in the first few laps by who gets through the grid quicker. It was a top eight grid reversal as well, so they've got some work to do. David Henderson and Gary Townsend share the front row ahead of Will Stevenson and crucially Aiden Hills up in fourth. Then Patrick Fletcher and Steve Roberts, Luke Herbert and Jack Harding. The top two from the previous race are on row four. Then Nick Rutter, Bradley Kent, Ray Worley and George Grant with Chris Richardson and Jack Sycamore at the back. Well, there is drama already, though. Aiden Hill's car has expired on the green flag lap. Look at that, Aiden Hills will be a non-starter in this third and final race, and that surely is one of the final nails in his championship challenge coffin. At the front of the field, though, we will have David Henderson and Gary Townsend, Luke Herbert and Jack Harding will share the fourth row. As for the final time here at Croft, the lights are out, we're away in racing, and the charge to Clervo quarter begins. We're on board there with Luke Herbert, Jack Harding still to his outside line, and we need to keep an eye to those two cars mid-pack as they try and work their way through the order in the early going. Gary Townsend gets the race lead, Patrick Flatcher dives up the inside of both Herbert and Harding. Harding goes the wrong side of the floppy, floppy marker post there through Clervo and Hawthorne. Jack Sycamore's out wide as well. It's another pretty... Uh, physical start here. Harding's off again now, cutting the chicane. Now, Luke Herbert will not be particularly happy about that, and no, he's not, because he will feel that Herbert, that uh, Harding has just gained an advantage from that shortcut, but Harding is actively defending, so he's showing no sign of giving the place back. It is Townsend that leads the way, then it's Henderson in second place by the looks of it, with Stevenson third, Roberts fourth. Now, Steve Roberts could make game for all this because he started just ahead of Herbert and Harding, but he's had a significantly cleaner start, it would seem, and has got a bit closer to the front of the queue than those two have. And Steve Roberts, when he's out in front, is more than capable of winning races. So Kent off through the gravel there at Clervo. Hangs on to it, and Patrick Fletcher locks up down at Tower Corner. And Patrick Fletcher's off, and Patrick Fletcher's almost in the barriers. Managed to avoid it, but he has a one-way ticket to the farmer's field. Jack Harding now into the complex at the end of the lap and it's all kicking off in front of us. Steve Roberts going for the race lead, but we're going right round the outside of our big championship rival, Luke Herbert. Can he get to the inside through the second part of the complex? No, he can't, but Luke Herbert is being really boxed in here behind Will Stevens. Look at that, there's nowhere to go as they turn through the hairpin. They avoid contact on the way in, but there's a bit of a touch on the exit of the corner. But Steve Roberts, look, going for the lead of the race, pulls himself alongside Gary Townsend. Jack Harding is alongside Luke Herbert as well, though. Where do you look for the race lead? Or do you look at the championship contenders? Down to Clervo, they go, look at this, Harding and Herbert touching a straight line at the fastest part of the track. Steve Roberts trying to go around the outside of Gary Townsend, that surely won't work. They turn into Hawthorne Corner, they lean on each other, they'll both wash out wide. And who's in third place? Well, that's Patrick Fletcher bouncing his way back onto the circuit. But what's going on out in front? It is Gary Townsend then who's got the race lead away. Steve Roberts in second place, uh, stays in second place, I should say, with Stevenson and uh, Henderson still dicing for third and Harding's back up the inside again of Luke Herbert. And 
This is starting to get a bit physical, but Herbert and Harding are both struggling to make progress here. It is not easy to overtake here, and they're so preoccupied with each other that they're not really able to put uh, together a, a concerted effort to actually get past everybody else. They're really just racing each other uh, and hoping that they get towards the front of the field. But look, Sycamore now is up the inside of Harding as Townsend runs wide in the race lead again. And Roberts this time is in his door as he tries to get alongside off the corner. Side by side onto the pit straight. No, not quite. Roberts ducks back into the slipstream. On board with Harding. Where's Jack Sycamore still behind? Does he pass to Sycamore? Is, uh, yeah, took right back in behind Jack Harding as they go down the pit straight with Nick Brutter, the orange machine, joining in the fun as well now. Leaders down to Tower Corner. Jack Harding going around the outside of Luke Herbert in what has been a breathless opening part of the race and Harding going right around the outside. He gets two wheels in the dirt but finds some traction nonetheless. He's going for third as Steve Roberts is going for the race lead up the inside. That won't work. Oh, he slams on the brake. He gets sideways right in front of Herbert who runs into the back of him but he had no choice and amazingly they get away without any significant contact there but Jack Harding has gone into second place now and has a car between himself and Luke Herbert crucially. Through the uh, sunny in and out complex they go again back down the straight towards the complex and this could still all go horribly wrong for some of our championship contenders. Gary Townsend resolutely hanging on to the lead of the race and uh, that move that Roberts attempted has cost him second position now. Herbert looking to the inside as well into the middle part of the complex. That won't work. Well, Stevenson runs out wide and Patrick Fletcher tries to get alongside him. But again, that does not come to anything into the hairpin as for the third lap in a row. The race leader, Gary Townsend, runs out wide, but this time it's Jack Harding who pulls alongside him. But Harding needs to be careful. If he goes to the outside at Clairvaux, he could end up in the kitty litter. And Steve Roberts is right there to pick up the pieces if this all goes wrong. Down to the first corner, Roberts goes with Townsend because he does not want Harding to get in front because then there's every chance that Jack could pull away and leave the wall in his dust, figuratively speaking at least. But he's almost in the dust as he goes through Clairvaux. Side by side again, contact there. Harding gets elbowed out wide and they're four abreast through Hawthorne Corner. Luke Herbert goes up the inside of everybody. Surely they won't all get through the chicane. No, they all go straight straight on. Steve Roberts, Gary Townsend, Jack Harding, they all cut the chicane and Roberts gets the lead away with Luke Herbert up the inside of Gary Townsend for second place now. Down into Tower Corner. Jack Harding's coming through as well. This is phenomenal racing but I think he's going to go through. Townsend is in danger of getting shuffled right to the back of this queue of cars now. He's trying to fight back but he can't do it. Well, into the final sequence of corners we go then, and Steve Roberts is going to take the race victory by the looks of it out of the final turn. Luke Herbert on his tail, and Jack Harding down to third. There's a bit of a slide there from Steve Roberts. Harding and Herbert try to get the run on him towards the flag. Luke Herbert might just get there. No, he just runs out of time, and the checkered flag flies for Steve Roberts by just over a tenth of a second, his first victory of the year in what was probably the race of the year. Luke Herbert comes home in second place in the end with G Jack Harding Harding third and actually receiving a five second track limit penalty anyway so he was never going to win that race in the end after all. Gary Townsend fourth, Nick Rutter fifth, Sycamore sixth, Will Stevenson was seventh with a penalty, David Henderson, Bradley Kent and Ray Worley round out the top ten. Patrick Fletcher also got a five second track limit penalty as well as uh, Jack Harding ahead of Chris Richardson and George Grant with Aidan Hills, a non-starter and possibly now out of contention for the title. Bless you, you look like you put everything into that race. I did, I've been searching for a win for a while, uh, since Donington last year, so yeah, pleased to get that one. By all means, you had everyone in the grandstands on their toes. Every time you guys were coming around, we didn't know who was going to be leading the pack, but you seem to have snuck in there and held your position. Yeah, well, I had a great start, and I kind of had the race won if I just kept my head, but I was, I was very keen to get in front, should we say, and, and then Jack and uh, Luke came back through, and then it didn't feel like a reverse race, re uh, reverse grid race after that you know it was, it was difficult but RBR gave me a great car and we had we had serious pace that's why I've been so frustrated all weekend I thought I can just get out and clear out I think I can at least keep the lead and gap them and I didn't quite do that but I think you know Luke was more worried about Jack but I had good pace and I don't think I was holding anyone up and I was dragging them along so uh, no I felt that was a good win.